Steve Rose, the most talked about man of the moment. Um, yes. Just talk to us about how you got the call, the information that you were possibly fighting Gennady Golovkin next, and when all, everything was confirmed, what went through your mind and what happened? Uh, well, I was actually, oh, um, I had to make a late night run to the store, and my manager had called me. And uh, he's like, hey, man, I got some uh, some life-changing news for you. Wow. And I was just like, oh, really? Okay, so let me hear it. And he's like, uh, how would you like to fight uh, Triple G? And, you know, I had to process that for a second. I was like, what? He's like, how would you like to fight Triple G? And I was like, well, of course. I mean, I didn't hesitate. Yeah. I jumped right on the opportunity. So, you know, it was a waiting game for a while because I know there was, another, there was a few other guys that were in the mix. But um, as soon as I found out that I was, it was confirmed that I'd be the one that's getting in the ring with him, um, yeah, man, I was, just, I was just very grateful, man. Very what, happy. What did you think that life-changing information was at the moment before you said you could fight in Gennady Golovkin next? Um, honestly, I, I, I had no clue, man. I just heard those words. And I was like, what, what is this guy going to, what does he have to tell me, right? Yeah. So uh, I didn't really, I didn't really think, but I definitely didn't think it was that. Yeah. Was that to your expectations or bigger or was when he said it? Uh, it no, that was to my expectations. I mean, yeah. that's pretty life changing for me. Yeah. What's um, your favorite Triple G fight you've ever, you've ever seen? My, my favorite one's going to be the one that I'm in with him. <laughs> when I'm, no, but honestly, um, you know what? He's a, he's a, he's a great fighter, man. He's a, he's a great champion. He's been around for a long time, so I don't really have a favorite, but you know, he gets the job done and he does it impressive. So, so you, you gotta, you're gonna try to be like Canelo your next fight, fight um, Canelo style? You know what, I'm gonna try and take like little pieces from, from different fighters, but at the end of the day, what's most important, important is, is me being myself. Without revealing too much, do you see a lot of holes in Gennady Golovkin's game? No, I don't see too many holes in his game. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of the time when people see holes in something, um, you know, comes fight night, it's a lot different once you get in there. Um, we're actually focused on more what he does well and trying to take that away from him. Is there anything you can take away from the Canelo second fight mm -hmm. and push back Triple G into this fight? Of course. It's, uh, it's the same thing. It's, uh, you know, that everybody else sees. Um, Canelo went to the body early, so that's something that we're thinking about doing it, and um, as well as, as bringing a fight to him. But like I said, that's not the only thing I'm relying on. We've got a couple different game plans, and I know I'm gonna have to be very versatile in there, being able to fight it like Triple G. But I know I'm, I'm definitely the one that can do it. What kind of sparring do you kind of looking for for him? He's a very difficult fighter to get ready for, but yeah, he is. We, uh, we have a few fighters flying in, uh, a few guys um, that we have in mind that we're gonna bring in that we think will do the job to help us get ready. Yeah. How would you describe your journey up until this point and finally getting this kind of fight in and the opportunity, like you said, a changing opportunity? Oh, it's been hard, man. It's, 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 been a, it's been a rocky road, man. There's been a lot of ups and downs. Like when I say this stuff on the stage, I'm being serious, 100% authentic. Like it's been very hard. There's been times where I thought that, you know what, I might have to do something else. I put my life in this, you know what I mean? But um, with that being said, you know, um, when, when you're given an opportunity like this, it, it you know, makes you realize that, that hard work does pay off, man. Yeah. It's an interesting position to be in, being the, the lesser known combatant in the fight. Do you like that position that you can fly under the radar? Or does it create kind of an emotion in you that you have to let people know who you are and what you've been through to get to this point? Talk about your feeling one way or the other. Um, you know what? I think that whoever gets in the ring with, with Gennady Golovkin is probably going to be an underdog if your name's not Canelo. But um, you know what, it, it, it really isn't something that I really put a lot of mind to, me being an underdog. I'm just really happy to get this opportunity and um, you know, take full advantage of it. Take full advantage of this opportunity here. Um, I've been getting a lot of support and um, at the end of the day, Everybody, everybody loves a, a, a great underdog story, and that's what I'm hoping to provide. You know how the fans are, man. They got the word cherry picker. Um, how do you feel about that perception? And for lack of a better term, that how do you feel about it? Well, it's, it's pretty crazy because I think that if I got the opportunity with anybody else, like I said, I was trying to fight guys in the top 25 to 10 um, around there. Um, I feel that you know I wouldn't got all that slack. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Sorry, I wouldn't push all. I wouldn't got all that flack. I think that if I was in there with um, another undefeated fighter, another top name, everybody would be like, okay, let's see what this guy has. He's 19 and 0. You know, he's whatever. They would have given me the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's because it's Golovkin. Um, no, but they want to see Golovkin in there with certain names, right? Like if you're not, if you're not Canelo. If you're not Andrade, if you're not uh, Charlo, or if you're not Jacobs, they don't want to see that. They don't want to see that. So, I mean, I understand. As a fan, I understand I'm relatively unknown, so I, I get that. But, you know, to kind of just, like, 
crap on somebody that gets an opportunity, man. I'm just getting an opportunity to try and, you know, provide a better life for my family and as well everything that I worked hard for. So for me catching all that flack, like, oh, you're, you're, you're a bum and this and that, I don't pay attention because I know it's not true, but I, I just really don't get that. Yeah. Um, your social to... media life has changed ever since then too, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I ain't gonna lie, man. My phone's been going. Like, I mean, it went off before, but not like this. This is this is crazy. I gotta I gotta shut it off at times, man, because it's getting too too much. Can you talk about the the weight that this fight is taking place? I think it's 164.5 or uh 164. Yeah. Yeah, the catch weight of 164, which is fine because I fought at 168 before a few times. I mean, I feel the best at, at 160, but um, I have no no issue with the 164 catch weight. Yeah, what do you think is behind that? Just looking at it outside from a fight, do you think that's a strategy to gain an upper hand from him or? Um, I'm not I'm not quite sure where, where that really comes from. Maybe he's been off for a bit, you know, and you know, he enjoyed his time off and he, he doesn't want to rush down right back to 160. Maybe he wants to get down there gradually. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, he's up there in age. Do you think that's going to be a factor at all? Um, you know what? I can't look at it like that. I can't. I've been asked that a lot, and I, and I can't because you know, um, Golovkin has so much experience, and he, and he and he's been in there with so many great fighters, um, and, and even his amateur career. If I start focusing on all and, and depending on him to slow down because of his age, you know what I mean? And instead of working hard and finding a game plan to actually like really beat the beat Golovkin, um, that can play in my disadvantage. So I don't pay attention to him having wars with Canelo or him taking time off or his age or any of that. I'm just preparing for the best Golovkin possible. When, when's the first time you watched a Gennady Golovkin fight and you started paying attention to him and said, wow, this guy's a good, a great fighter? Or You want to know what's crazy is that I've been scoping out um, the middleweight division for a long time now, even before Gennady was, was brought over to America. And I was like, and I came across Golovkin. I've been watching him for a long time and I was like, whoa, who's this guy? He's champion and no one's ever heard of this guy. Look at his knockout ratio and, and how he boxes. And then, you know, next thing you know, you see him, they brought him over to America and he becomes a big star, so. Your experience at the Cryer Gym, it, is this gonna really help you in this fight? Do you feel like that? Yeah, of course. I think uh, everything that I've been through, um, sparring with world champions, working with the, the late great Emmanuel Stewart, man's a legend, I think everything that, that I've been through when it comes to that is gonna help me. I'm gonna need it all. I'm gonna need everything for, for, for that, for this fight. Emmanuel Stewart was a very big fan of um, Kanani Glock. He spoke highly of him. Did he ever tell you anything about him at all? Like, just a kind of conversation like, oh look, he's, he's a good fighter, he's a great fighter, these are his mistakes, or um, to that extent? No, no, I mean, I'm sure he, he, he brought uh, Golovkin up to a lot of his fighters, but that um, that was never part of a topic with us at the time. This was back in like 2012, 2011, so. Yeah. And Steve, this is your, Steve, this is your uh, first time on the big stage like yeah. this. Uh, how are you gonna limit the distractions? Um, you know what? I just I tell myself, listen. This is what it is. This is what I've been preparing for since I've been since I got into boxing. Um, I've been wanting to fight at this stage, so I knew that all the media and all the answering, the, doing the interviews, that's something that comes with it. So I've been mentally preparing for myself for to be in this situation. And um, sometimes if it gets too rough and stuff, I just turn my phone off, chill, and just kind of meditate. And and ha with you knowing Golovkin throughout the rise of his career and obviously seeing him on the big stage, uh, what has been your biggest learning and takeaway from a scouting perspective? Um, basically that this this guy is, is, is the real deal. He's the real deal, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's the thing that I'm getting out of this. I'm in the fight of my life, I'm looking forward to it. Um, a lot of people turned it down. So a lot of people would turn a fight like this down. And as soon as the opportunity was presented to me, I jumped right on it. And obviously he's known for his power. How do you think you're gonna withstand that kind of punch from him? I've been in there with guys that hit hard before, but um, like I said, man, I'm not really concerned about how I'm gonna feel. I just, as long as I'm 100%, as long as I'm 100% mentally, which I'm going to be, I already am, um, I feel I'll be able to deal with it. I've been in there with cruiserweights before. I've been in there with heavyweights. I mean, hard hitting cruiserweights too. And um, I've, I've gone rounds and rounds and rounds with them. So um, I think that'll help me prepare for this. And Steve, what are you going to do after you win? After I win? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to go get a big old steak. <laughs> <laughs> Any name in particular you fought that's known in sparring, like sparring wise? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in there with guys like uh, David Lemieux, Billy Joe Saunders, mm -hmm. Lucien Boutte. 
um, Adonis Stevenson, Glenn Johnson, um, Andy Lee. So those are big punchers. Yeah. So, so that's confident in yourself that you can take United nice punch? Yeah, definitely. There's uh, one cruise win, I'm not sure if you guys heard of him, um, but his name's Troy Ross. At the, at the time when he was fighting, one of the hardest hitting guys I've ever been in the ring with. But um, And that was way back when I was amateur on the national team and stuff. But yeah, there's been guys I've been in the ring that I think will help prepare me for that. Um, you never know. We'll, we'll have to see when we get in there. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate the time, Steve. All right. Thank you.